Hello, welcome to the podcast. I am so happy that you're here. I have so much to tell you today. But before we begin, I want you to know something. I am turning 40 years old. Can you believe it? I'm so excited. I age gratefully, not just gracefully, but I'm aging gratefully because as you may or may not know, I was married when I was 19 years old to my high school sweetheart, Giovanni Lopez, and he passed away uh, when he was 23. And so when he passed away and when I had my two children, every year of my life, I am so grateful that I'm on this planet. Like, I don't celebrate the big one. I celebrate all of them. When I was 36, it's like that shit was like I'm 40. When I was 37, it was like, oh, my God, 37. I don't wait for the big one. However, this is a big one. And I'm grateful that I hit 40. Like, I should not be here right now. The fact that I'm alive, the fact that I'm doing what I get to do. It makes me emotional and I'm also bleeding. So I'm not going to talk about it too much because I will start crying up in here on this podcast right now. So I'm telling you this before we begin the episode because the 1st of June, I am doing something that I've never done before. The biggest promotion, the biggest offering, the biggest celebration uh, that we've ever done here at the Queen of Confidence. And I need you to know about it because you listen to this podcast and I love you and I appreciate you. You be binging and you need to know about it, okay? Because if you like my podcast, if you listen to this shit, if any of this has ever helped you or your friends or anything, you're going to want to know about this 40th birthday extravaganza, okay? So what I want to bring your attention to is in the show notes, there is going to be a button. There's going to be a link that says 40th birthday extravaganza list. Click here. What's going to happen is on the 1st of June, you're going to get the email and you're going to see what it is. And it is when I tell you it's no small thing, I've never done this before. I'll never do it again. From the 1st to the 17th of June, is we're going to celebrate my birthday. My birthday is on the 17th of June, Gemini over here, and it's going to be huge. And instead of celebrating myself, I want to celebrate with you because I love you and this is why I do this work. Who cares about me celebrating my birthday? Let's do it together. So when I'm telling you that it's the biggest thing, it's the biggest thing. Please do not mess around. Go to that link. Stop this tape. <laughs> Go to the link now, put your name, put your email. If you hate the emails, you could always unsubscribe. It's not a problem. It's no hard feelings, boo, I love you. But I need you to be on that list because when it's finished, here's what's going to happen. Oh my God, Erica, I heard you were doing this thing and oh, I didn't hear about it. I didn't know. Then you're going to be sad and then I'm going to be sad because you're sad and then I can't do anything about it because we're not bringing it back from the dead. Once it's gone, that shit is murdered. That's it. We gone. We done. So please click that link in the show notes right now. Okay. I love your face. I'm so excited. Like I've been smiling way too much. So I am bleeding right now. Um, I am feeling all my feels. I don't know about you, but when I get the bleed, I'm like, oh, I just want to sit on the couch and I just want to have my chai. And I, it's funny because I usually have energy in my bleed. Like the week before, I want to murder everybody, like my husband, my kids. I'd be snappy with everybody the week before. I'm not nice. But then the day of, I'm like hype. I have energy. So I have energy right now, but I'm just like, it is winter in Australia and I just want to be in my little hoodie oody thing, you know, with the fur and just sitting on the couch with some furry socks and like snuggling my husband and doing nothing. <laughs> That's what I want to be doing right now. But anyway, we are here and we are talking about something really juicy today. Uh, I always talk about how to be more confident, how to take up space, how to create the life you want, how to do all those amazing things, how to do that. And today I thought, let's flip it. Let's do the ante. Let's talk about the four things confident people don't do confident people don't do. And so I wanted to break that down because I think sometimes we think, what do I need to do? If I did what Erica did, if I did what Jayla was doing, if I did what whoever you look up to was doing, I just need to do more. I got to do, 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 do. And I'm like, no, it's not what you need to do. It's what you need to not do. Sometimes it's what, we, what we're doing that's not getting us the result that we want. Sometimes it's the thing that you have in your daily doing that's stopping you or blocking you from creating what you actually desire. And so I wanted to talk about four specific things in this episode that we don't do. When we are creating confidence as confident women out there in the world, um, getting what we want, making shit happen, we are not doing these four things. Are you ready for these? Okay, let's start with number one. Number one, confident people do not always feel confident. And I know it sounds silly, but hear me out. I think people think you are confident and then they put this label on you and you walk around with confident label and that's it you're confident forever that is not <laughs> that is not the case confident people do not always feel confident 
If you think about confidence, right, it's an emotion. It's really a feeling. So how do you feel confident? Well, feelings come from your thoughts, right? What are you thinking about? What you think about makes you feel a way, makes you take a certain action and you get a result. So we aren't always confident. I, there's many times where I lack confidence throughout my day, throughout the day to day. There's many times throughout big things happening. Like I've talked about it before on the podcast, talking on a stage to a thousand plus people. I am not feeling my most confident when my ass is about to step out onto that stage. And so I think it's a, it's really a myth that we believe that once you're confident, you got it. It's that gold star. When I, then I, when I get confident, then all my problems will be solved forever. No, it's not the way it works. So Here's what I want you to think about instead. Instead of thinking that you always have to feel confident, when you're in the moments of lacking confidence, when you're in the, in the dip, when, you're don't, when you don't feel the best, that's normal. That's the level up. That's what needs to happen in order for you to have the next moment, which is feeling incredible and confident. If you don't give up. If you know that this is natural, that you are going to ebb and flow, and that confidence is a practice that you commit to daily, hourly, sometimes second to second, and that it is not a final destination for you to get to, then you will be cool with knowing that you're not always going to be confident. You're not always going to be confident. It's impossible to always be. It's like, I'm always happy. You don't want to always be happy. At a funeral, you're not going to be happy, right? When something bad happens, you're not going to be happy. So it is part of the process of creating and cultivating a confidence mindset is that you're not always going to feel confident. And confident people know that. So we get ready. We know when we're in a lull, it's like, cool, this is a level up. Instead of making it mean that I'm so horrible and I'm never going to be confident again and I'm so shit and getting anxious about not being confident, we go, oh, I trust the process. This is a part of that process that I'm in and I'm just going to trust what's happening right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know that like the arrow pulling back, you got to hold that tension, hold that tension, hold that tension. And when it lets go, pew, you're going to fly forward so far because you held that tension and that uncomfortability that was happening. So that's number one. We are not always feeling confident. That's number one. The second thing confident people don't do is stay comfortable. We do not stay comfortable. And I have to say this, like so many of us, we're in jobs that we hate, in relationships that are mediocre, friendships that are mediocre. We're mediocre about the way that we move our bodies, the way that where our health and fitness is, the, the quality of our life. Like we are not staying comfortable. When we are creating confidence, that's the opposite of what we're doing. Because comfort is safety. Safety is no risk. No risk is boring. Nothing is happening. It's that monotone, you know, missionary position. We're not doing that. That's so boring. If you just did that all damn day, starfish, you're not going to have fun in your life. Okay? So we are not keeping ourselves in a comfortable space, which means we're taking risk which means we're doing scary shit. This is why my book is called Confidence Feels Like Shit. And I did a podcast. I'll link it below. Confidence Feels Like Shit. People go, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? It's not fun to create confidence. It doesn't feel good. You're not on top of the world. Oh my God. No, you're like, fuck, is this the right thing? Ah, Your knees are all wobbly and your voice is shaking and you're sweating from your pits. Maybe upper lip. I don't know. Like You're like, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? Is this the right way? I'm walking in the dark. I'm bumping into shit. I don't know what's happening. That is... That is the practice of confidence. It's moving through discomfort. It's putting yourself in positions where you're not comfortable. You're not going to grow. We know this. We've heard your growth happens outside of your comfort zone. We've seen the fucking keynote speeches on it. We get it. Growth mindset, fixed mindset. I know you know this. So if that's the case and you're wanting to be someone who creates confidence, you're wanting to be someone who puts themselves out there, you're wanting to hit your goals and your dreams and you're wanting to get what you want, which you don't have right now, You think you're going to do is staying comfortable. It's not going to happen. You don't get to. If you ask me, I think it's an initiation into creating confidence. Somebody sees a confident woman and it's like, oh, wow, lucky for her. No, she's not lucky. She's sweating in her pits right now. She's doing skid marks in her undies shit. Like there's pee dripping down her leg shit. She is doing a spiritual poo before she gets on stage shit. Like that's what I'm doing. I'm nervous. I'm scared the whole time. I am fully outside of my comfort zone. Probably 99.9% of my life. And that's the way it is. It's like we can't stay comfortable and get a different result. We can't keep doing the same shit and expect something different to happen. I don't put my hand up. Well, looks like your voice is not going to be heard. I don't speak my truth. Well, looks like people don't know what you mean then because you're not saying it. I don't say no. Well, it looks like you like this treatment because you're saying yes. 
So these are the these are the positions that we need to put ourselves in. We have to move in the positions of discomfort if we're wanting to grow and if we're wanting to create more self-confidence, more belief in ourselves. If we're wanting to get what we want, that risk taking shit is high up there. OK, so number two, we do not stay comfortable. That's something a confident person does not do. So we don't, number one, always feel confident and we don't, number two, stay comfortable. The third thing that confident people do not do, do not do, is break promises to themselves. Let me tell you something. When you ask me, my favorite definition of confidence is the Latin definition. It says fidere is the word, which means to trust yourself. That's what confidence means to trust yourself. So people go, I don't have confidence. What, you don't trust yourself? How do you trust yourself? Well, you say, today I'm gonna record a podcast, even though I wanna be on the couch bleeding and feeling like shit in my Udi with my hot ass cup of tea and my sexy ass husband on the couch. But your ass rocks up to the office and you record the damn podcast because you said you would. You keep your word to yourself. The little things you say, I'm gonna get up at 6 a.m. and you get up at 7.30, that breaks inner confidence with yourself. That breaks trust with yourself. So one of the, the, the third thing that confident people do not do is they don't break promises to themselves. They say it, they're gonna do it. Their word is their bond. It's like, if I said that shit, I'm doing that shit. And so one of the things you could do right now, if you're someone who says stuff but doesn't follow through, is what if you kept your word to yourself? What if you kept your word to yourself? What if you only said the things that you were for sure gonna do? It would stop us talking a lot of shit and sharing shit on Instagram when we're not actually doing it. You know what? I'm going to do this one thing. I'm going to wake up every day at 6 a.m. and I'm going to get up and journal before my kids wake up. Or I'm going to get up and, you know, do some work before everybody wakes up. Or I'm going to get up early in the morning before the, you know, the sun comes up so that I can get shit done and feel good about myself. And you, that next day, your ass is up. That alarm goes off. You do not hit that snooze button. You like, boom, you do that Mel Robbins five second shit, five, four, three, two, one, boom, and your ass is out of the bed, right? You get up because you said you would. So that is a big one, my friend. If you want to build confidence, you got to learn how to build self-trust. How do you build self-trust? What you say, you do. You keep your word to yourself. Stop breaking these little mini promises to yourself because you might not think about it consciously, but subconsciously, your brain's like, yep, cool. I knew you weren't going to do that because you don't do what you say because you don't trust yourself, because you have no confidence. And then out in the world, this is what's happening. This is the result that you're creating. And if you're not even aware of it, if right now all this is doing for you is getting you aware, and you're like, whoa, I do break promises to myself. High five. That's huge. For you to know that you're there, now the second step is, what are we going to do about it? Make a little promise. Don't be doing some big, I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week. If you never go, that's probably not going to happen. I'm going to go to the gym one day. I'm going to get up every Wednesday at 6 a.m. And then you could say Wednesday, Friday. You know what I'm saying? Like little steps, little wins. But that's number three. We do not break promises to ourselves because that kills our comp. That's a killer of confidence. Cool. Number four and final number four. We don't tear other people down. Yo, I can't tell you enough. When I see people out in the world making shit happen, when I see people putting themselves out there, when I see people giving life a go, trying shit, taking risks, building businesses, changing their offer, changing their business, changing their niches, uh, changing relationships, moving, changing jobs, whatever. When I see people out there moving, if they're moving, I'm like, you go, high five to you. Not tearing them down because here's the thing, they're giving it a go. They're out in the ring. What does Brene Brown says? If you're in the ring, if you're in the arena and you're taking the punches, cool. You're fucking in the arena. I see you. I'm in the arena too. Let's get punched in the face together. Life is going to punch you in the face. Life is competitive and life is fucking hard. That, that's how it is. Don't tear somebody else down. That's not confident people don't do that because we understand what it takes to actually put yourself out there. We understand how hard it is to raise your hand when you're a woman in an office full of men and you feel like you lack confidence, but you might be the smartest person in that damn room. We know how hard that is. So I'm not going to be like, oh, she's the, who does she think she is? I'm never going to do that. I'm like, you go, girl. Sometimes people look to you because you're doing the scary thing that they don't have the courage to do. You. Not saying me, I'm saying you. In your world, people look to you because you're doing something courageous that they would never have the courage to do. So you inspire more people than you know, my friend. Not because you're a business owner, but as a mother, as a person, as a human being on planet Earth, you are inspiring people by living your life. 
And one of the things we don't do is we're not tearing other people down. Because it takes a lot to be in the arena. It takes a lot to put yourself out there. It takes a lot to say, fuck it, I'm going to take this risk. I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be brave. It takes so much. Who tears people down? People that lack confidence. People that have nothing better to do with their lives. The people that make fun of you. The people that tear you down. The people that criticize you. That says everything about them. Imagine who you are. What kind of person you are. Imagine your level of joy. Imagine how much you don't like yourself or you don't like your life. For you to spend your whole day watching reality TV, criticizing people from fucking television, pointing the finger at people on the red carpet. What are they wearing? That's so stupid. Like, that's why I say to you, my love, don't watch that shit. It makes you a, a baddie. It makes you a, a bad person that looks at people and judges people. I don't watch any of that. I don't want to make fun of the Kardashians. It's, I got better shit to do with my life. I don't care about Love Island or fucking Bachelor or Maths or any of that shit. I don't want to tear anybody down. And if you don't pay attention, you do. Because they put people in these places to be, you're going to be the victim. You're going to be the stupid pretty girl. You're going to be the stupid this person. You're going to be the evil person. You're going to be the poor damsel in distress. This is the positions and the characters that are made when we watch this reality TV, when we watch Instagram and scroll these influencers and think that life is real. Like, let's do something better with our time. Instead of criticizing other people and tearing other people down, get your ass in the arena so you can get punched in the face. Get punched in the face with me. It's so much fun. <laughs> we out here making shit happen. Do I get punched all the time? I be knocked out all the time, but I get my ass back up. And I get better at dodging the punches. I get faster. I get, you know, my footwork gets better. I be like bobbing and weaving. Now I'm like, okay, we got this life. Come on, me life. Life is going to come at you. Life is going to come at you. And if you're not ready and you're not making it happen for yourself, you're going to have zero, uh, what's the word called, uh, resilience in the ring. You're going to have no longevity. You're not going to be fit to deal with the punches that life is going to throw at you. And so it's easier to make fun of other people and tear other people down and do fuck all with your life. And I'm like, we don't do that. That's number four. The biggest thing, confident people do not tear other people down because we know how hard it is to put yourself out there. We know how hard it is to fail publicly. We know how hard it is to, to go again. Like people talk shit about JLo, but I love her. Why? She loves love. She gives love a go. Like her relationship has failed. Who cares? Well, she's never going to date again because people are going to say she dates too much. Who gives a fuck what those people think? She believes in love and she's going for it as many times as it takes. And I'm, I'm about that with my life. I'm like, hell yeah, JLo. You could have made better decisions. Yes, you needed a life coach. You probably should have joined the sisterhood girl. I could have hooked you up. But you know what? That's the reality. That's what she did. And now she's doing her thing. You think she gives a fuck about these critics that are eating fucking popcorn, watching her shit on TV, listening and tearing her down? No, she don't care. She does not give a damn what we have to say. She is living her life. And so that's number four. We are not tearing other people down because we know what it takes to create a courageous ass life. We know how scary it is. And we're in the arena getting punched in the face. We're not listening to the critics that are watching in the sidelines talking shit while they're watching. I'm like, you, hold on, you, you're sitting down eating popcorn, drinking a beer while you watch us in the arena. We're the entertainment. We're the ones making it happen. Why would we listen to the critics? So that's number four. I'm going to run you through again four things that confident people do not do. Number one, always feel confident. That is not happening. We don't always feel confident. Absolutely not. Most of the time you don't feel confident. Number two, staying comfortable. That's not a thing. We are out of our comfort zone all of the time making shit happen in our lives. Number three, we do not break promises to ourselves. We are not saying something and not doing it. That is a killer of confidence, my friend. And number four, we are not tearing people down. We are lifting people up and we are too worried about getting ours than looking at what somebody is not doing. Cool? So if you want to genuinely create more self-confidence in yourself, these are the four keys of things not to do. Okay? I love you so much. I cannot wait to see you next week. And get your booty onto that birthday list because it's going to happen and then it's going to finish and you're going to miss it if you don't make it happen. And if you're listening to this podcast after when I'm like 42 or 43, I'm so sorry that you missed it. I love your face. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next week.